So one thing that we haven't accounted for is the shadow that's being cast by the plume. If we go to our composite view and we look at something here in our network, this obviously looks pretty weird right now because I'm not uh, loading OCIO properly, but we can tell even with this weird render that there's no shadow happening and that's not very realistic. So the question is, how do you get the shadow on the ground? Well, you might think to go to the stage and create some sort of shadow catcher inside of Karma. To go about that, you would create a background plate. You would then specify the objects that you want to be the mat or the ground where shadows are being captured. And then you would plug that into the render products right here. So you might think to do that, but you're going to run into issues because there's currently no way, from my understanding, to isolate a shadow based on a specific object. So in other words, I can't just get only the shadow from the plume. I'll be getting shadows from the other rock formations. I'll be getting shadows from everything. And so that's not going to be the route to go. And uh, this is kind of a interesting situation where, you know, if you're at a studio, let's say this was rendered in V-Ray, the, the environment was, and you want to render this out, the explosion, using Karma. Well, the best way to get the shadow working properly is honestly to render out the environment with the explosion in Redshift just for the shadow. Uh, so here's what I mean by that. Let's say that we go to our Redshift render view. We do have the shadow right here. All we need to do is make this volume invisible. So on the large plume build, turn off the primary and secondary ray visibility under the Redshift OBJ visibility tab. And this will have the shadow with no plume. This is the easiest way to go about it. In fact, it might be the only way to really go about it. So again, if you're at a studio, if they're using RenderMan, V-Ray, uh, Redshift, any other engine, you'll still probably need to bring in your cache files and re-render the environment with just the uh, volumes invisible and do it this way. Which kind of brings us back to our whole discussion of what render engine you should use in production. Honestly, I don't like using multiple render engines for this exact reason, if you can, because uh, you'll probably have to render everything twice anyways, and use your cache files to render over here and over there, and it just gets rather complicated. It's always better, in my opinion, to render everything with the same engine. And so, um, well, anyway, in this case, it's kind of a special circumstance because I'm trying to show you guys how to comp something here in the image context. But I just want to point out that it's not a good idea to just rely on creating a shadow catcher inside of LOPS. That's going to give you issues, again, because you don't have the ability, from my understanding, to isolate a shadow based on a particular object. As of right now. So anyway, the whole solution to this uh, shadow catcher situation is to render the background elements with Redshift. And then we'll just kind of do this visibility trick like I just showed you. So that's it. That's it for this particular lesson. <laughs> uh, nothing more to say than that. And in the next video, let's address multiple explosions being layered on top of each other.